Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we will discuss the problem strictly increasing array. So let us read the problem statement and see what the problem says. Then we will solve this problem. So here in this problem, we will be given an array nums which will be consisting of n positive integers. And we have to find the minimum number of operations that we need to apply such that the array becomes strictly increasing. So basically what do we mean by a strictly increasing array? That if suppose that we have any ith element, so it should be less than its next element. Okay. And this should hold true for all the values of i. So if we check any adjacent pair, so the left element should be lesser than the right element. Okay. So this thing should follow. Now changing a number to greater or less than the original number present at that index is counted as one operation. So suppose that we are given the n value as 6. Okay. Suppose that we are given the size of the array as 6 and what are the array elements? Let's say the array elements are nothing but 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 4. So suppose we have 1, then 2 and then 3 and then we have 6, 5 and then 4. So for the size of uh, the array being 6 and the array 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 4. What is the minimum number of operations that will be required? The minimum number of operations that will be required, you can see here, is nothing but 2. Okay. So the minimum number of operations they are saying uh, is 2 here. Why it is 2? Because in this case, what you can do is you can see that you can decrease this number 6 and instead of it, you can make it as what? You can make it as nothing but 4. And then you can increase the element 4 and you can make it to 6. So by doing these two changes, by doing these two changes only, your array will become strictly increasing because then the array will be what? 1, 2, 3, then 4, and then 5, and then 6. So you can see that by doing two operations, the array becomes strictly increasing in nature. Now, let's see if there is another test case given. Yes, so you can see that n is given as 4. Now, if you will see n is equal to 4, so in this, case 1, 2, 3, 4. The array is already strictly increasing. So that is why no operation will be applied and you can say that the answer will, will, uh, will be returned as nothing but 0 here. Right. So how can we solve this particular problem? So for solving this particular problem, you need to understand one thing that which elements you are not going to replace. So basically the elements which are already a part of the longest increasing subsequence. Right. So if you will see, suppose that there are elements which are already a part of the longest increasing subsequence, right? So whatever inside this array, we will try to find the length of the longest increasing subsequence and those elements we will not be changing. Why? Because if you will see this particular array, suppose, so if you find the longest increasing subsequence, this is a DP concept. So I'm assuming that you already have idea about longest increasing subsequence because longest increasing subsequence is a question in DP itself. So if you will see, now, uh, subsequence is what? Basically when you can uh, either take an element or skip an element uh, given in an array, right? And you have to follow the order from left to right. So you can see that if I take the subsequence one, then two, then three, and then five. So this is the longest increasing subsequence for this array, right? The longest increasing subsequence for this array is of size 4 because there are 4 elements that are there that are a part of the longest increasing subsequence because if I take 1, 2, uh, 3 and then 5 so this will be the longest increasing subsequence. After this what I can say is that what is the total size? The total size is nothing but 6. So 6 elements are total uh, there and 4 elements are a part of longest increasing subsequence. So I can say that I need to change only 2 elements right and that's how I will uh, be able to uh, minimize my number of operations or number of changes required because the elements which are a part of the longest increasing subsequence they won't be changed and my subsequence uh, longest increasing subsequence means what the subsequence in which the elements are in increasing order already so if I will uh, keep a track of the longest increasing subsequence and then from the total array size if I'll subtract the size of the longest increasing subsequence then I'll get the number of elements that I need to change here Right, so what can we uh, do in terms of code? Right, so first of all, what we can uh, do here is, first of all, we need to apply the concept of DP here. So what we will do here is, when we are going to start off, so first of all, we will declare a DP array. So let's say we will uh, create a DP array of n size. 
so let me take the size of the array int n is equal to nothing but let's say nums dot size here okay now after this uh, what you will do is you will declare a dp array of uh, size n and then after that you will initially do what like you will iterate i starts from 0 i is less than n and then you will do i plus plus now dp of i is always going to store what dp of i will be there and it will be storing number like whenever i am at the ith element right so it will always store like it will always keep a track of the uh, lis here so what i will do is initially i'll update my dp of i as nothing but one then after this uh, initially i will mark my answer as one because at least my longest increasing subsequence is going to be of length one okay and for every ith element i have updated the dp of i as one because at least the length would be one okay then after this what we will do is we'll start from the one th element why we will start from the i is equal to one because whenever i am at the ith element so i will i want to check the elements before it okay so i starts from zero i is less than n then we will do i plus plus and then whenever we are at the ith element so we will check for all the elements starting from zero th element till before the ith index okay now why we are like what we are uh, doing by uh, checking by starting the iteration from one and doing the iteration lesser than uh, uh, like uh, doing a j iteration from zero till less than n so we are checking that if the current element that is there okay if the current ith element that is there if it can be made greater than the previous element right without violating the conditions then we are going to update so what we are checking here is that if suppose that we are at the uh, ith element so suppose that if uh, we have the ith element so in this case uh, let's say uh, the ith element that is there okay if suppose that that element is what if that element is greater than the jth element so if the ith element is greater than the jth element and at the same time the dp of i is what it is less than uh, dp of j plus 1 okay and at the same time what you need to check is you need to check i minus j is less than uh, equal to nums of i minus nums of j so basically why we are checking this because if we are going to make any changes to the array no? like if we are going to make any update so what you need to check is whether that those changes can be accommodated or not right because if if suppose that you are going to change a certain element but what will happen is uh, if you make a change then uh, things might overlap so that is why you will check that whether that many elements you have in the range and then only you will check that if i minus j is less than equal to nums of i minus j then only you can make the changes right so then you will do what then you will update the dp of i as nothing but maximum of the dp of i comma what comma the dp of j plus one here and now once you will be done with this then after every iteration of i you will always keep a track of the maximum right so you'll store max of answer comma dp of i so basically we are storing the lis in the answer you can say and then at the end of the day you will just return n minus the answer okay if you want you can do it uh, the other way around you can use recursive approach as well to write the similar conditions but i am using the iterative approach here okay so this will be the approach let's try and compile this to check if it is working uh, fine on the samples or not okay so this is working fine let's try and submit if it gets accepted then i'll explain why i have used the condition i minus j is less than equal to nums of i minus nums of j yes so let us uh, have a look at this condition uh, before that if you will discuss the time complexity so i am using two loops so that will be order of n square space complexity would be order of n because i am using a 1d array now what happens is uh, whenever we are checking the condition i minus j being lesser equal to nums of i minus nums of j okay so this condition is indicating what this condition indicates the difference in indices okay the difference is indices if the difference in indices is less than equal to the difference in the values so if it allows the operation to be performed without validating the strictly increasing order then only i will make changes so this is the condition that is necessary here okay so i hope that you have understood this particular uh, problem clearly and please make sure to do a dry run of this code on the various sample test cases uh, okay and uh, thank you for watching this video keep coding